did you first take Valium? Well, I was about 13 years old. People continue to mix drugs uh, and take substances like diazepam. They're dying. <laughs> Put, do you want to put me down? I've got you. Watch yourself. <sighs> the last time I seen him with his like a skeleton, be a skin graft. Diazepam's always been around, and it's always been consistent. Scotland's little helper. Yeah, Scotland's little helper. Yeah. Whilst alcohol, ecstasy, and heroin have historically been at the centre of Scotland's drug scene, Valium has been a silent partner. Hard at work in the background, with many users craving a tranquilised existence. It's 10.15am and Jamie is calling his dealer. Hi mate, cool. Eh, uh, what? A score mate, a score. Nobody's mate, that sounds ideal. Cheers mate, that's what? It's like, yeah, it's your favourite kind of sweet, eh? It tastes like that. He has a Valium addiction, and like thousands of other people in Scotland, he doesn't get the pills from his doctor. He buys them from a local dealer. Do you want to show us what you got then? Aye. So how, how many is in there? It's ten. Ten and a uh, heat strip. Yeah. But you bought 20? Aye, that, that's why when I said a score, that's, that means 20. How much does 20 cost? 20 pound. Aye, that's breakfast. Yeah, yeah, yeah go on. Excuse me. Would you consider yourself to be dependent on Valium? At the moment, I, yeah. It fills that emptiness and it feels like it's your own shield or because you're wrapped in bubble wrap and things don't really matter as much. But then again, the, mo the problem's still there in the morning if you're willing to just not address it, but they certainly do help and calm the stresses of life. Scotland has a big problem with Valium, otherwise known as diazepam. 76% of drug-related deaths involve the pills, or drugs similar to them, compared to figures in England and Wales of just 11%. You're invisible, invincible and indestructible. Right. The guy. You're, you're, you're fucking, you're king, you know what I mean? Like, nobody can touch you. In Dundee, there has been a recent spate of overdoses involving the once widely prescribed drug. It wasn't long before I met Billy, who explained to me the wide range of pills available on the street. I can show you some of the pills that are actually available. Right, so that's MTZ. So what are these pills like? The last batch of them were kind of like a killer batch. They're really, really bad batch, you know what I mean? But um, there's cocks. The yellows. How much were these at each? It's always 20 for a tenner. So that's like 50p per pill? 50 pence per pill. the going pill. right, basically. Ah, right. Yeah. Um, and there was Tiva. There's Stencil. Again, they're still not real. You know what I mean? It's very, very rare that you'll see somebody with a box of a real diazepam. It was clear from talking to Billy that not all the blue pills on the street contained genuine Valium. Many of them were fake. I met Kenny Simpson at Police Scotland, who has made tackling the Valium issue a priority. He showed me a range of fake Valium tablets recovered from raids on DIY drug factories. This is just a sample of a large seizure of tablets that have been uh, illicitly produced. We've had seizures of a million tablets uh, in one operation, so that, that reflects the scale of, of what's actually out there. The main issues are, are twofold. The illicit production of the tablets, um, which brings with it the concerns that it's not pharmacists, and then the serious and organised crime involvement in diverting blister-packed tablets from lawful production. Probably one of the most understated drugs and has been for a long number of years. The users are, can be quite ambivalent about what the outcome is in terms of their health. But if people continue to mix drugs uh, and take substances like diazepam or the equivalent, um, they're dying. 
Many of these blue pills contain Valium-like drugs far stronger and potentially more dangerous than whatever users think they're buying. Back in Dundee, I met a user named Levi and his friend AJ. They'd known each other since Levi was young, the whole time he'd been addicted to Valium. Levi was heading home to take some blue pills he'd recently bought. There's the um, diazepam, yeah. Did you put them in the Kinder Egg? Aye, aye. The pills Levi was taking looked very similar to the fake tablets I'd seen at the police station. They had NTZ stamped on them and were sold loose. When you moved to Dundee, did you find that Valium was just was was very easily available? The first thing I got asked when I stepped off the air bus was to run any Valium. Wow. <laughs> when I first started to hear Valium, I used to um, take them out in the street and then I'd end up going to think that was invisible, I'd go shoplifting and stuff. Whereas now, I come, I get me Valium, I come back, I come to the house, I'll sit, I'll shut the door, and that's me. I do it the part of way. Whereas people do it the wrong way by just going around the town full of it, pinching things and that. Well, I don't do that. I'm a beggar. Sitting there begging actually does give you a nice feeling. You sat there, you're not harming anybody, so they wouldn't help you. When did you first take Valium? When I was about 13 years old. Was when I was younger, I might have been only 11. How old are you now? Me, I'm 29. Would you usually take 30, 40 Valium as well as smoking legal highs and taking yeah, methadone? Yeah, okay, because yeah. that's not unusual. Like many users, Levi was taking Valium with a combination of other drugs. This can be particularly dangerous, and the effects were really starting to show. Do you want me to help you put that up? Pop it on the floor, pop it on the floor. So how long have you been doing this job for? Um... <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> just really surprised me and came out of nowhere. You yeah. might need some strange people, some colourful people. Well, you could say that, you could say that. What is it wrong for, me? As we continued to chat, there were moments when it became difficult to understand Levi. He'd have moments of clarity and then drop off. I thought you fell asleep then. <laughs> put, do you want to put me down? I've got you. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. How you feeling? Yeah, believe me, believe I has a little song out. Oh, yeah. I'll just put this out so it doesn't burn the carpet. You've got a Bible over there. Yeah, yeah. I'm Christian. You're Christian? Mm. Yeah, I still believe. I hope, I, I pray that there's somewhere better than this. Get out of this life. I know it's this, man. That kind of smells like it might be burning. Mm -hmm. 
Would you like to stop taking Valium? Yeah. I'm not really afraid of this. This is not right. You must see it all. Don't touch them, son. They're just too much to help us. We might go to the street cell one day by watch my husband help us. How do they help you? Then we have a couple of these. Oh, now I know how to help you. <laughs> now the Levi's still help us. <laughs> and start taking them. Levi was shutting himself off from the world to avoid getting into trouble whilst high on Valium, the very drug he used to deal with loneliness and isolation. Valium has been widely prescribed for anxiety and depression since the 60s. However, in the late 80s, doctors started to scale this back because so many patients developed addictions. Gareth Barmer has worked to help drug users for 10 years at the charity Ad Action. He explained to me why Scotland has such a big problem with Valium. But like lots of things, we, it was seen as a bit of a panacea. I mean, and this is not a Scottish thing, this is a worldwide thing. And they work. And so they were prescribed, but nobody really saw the problems. Because when they were first sold, not addictive. I mean, I think you, you can find adverts, you know, from you know, this is a new great drug that, you know, it's not addictive. It's not like the barbiturates or some of these other drugs that were really dangerous. It's, it's going to be great. They were wrong. It was dependence producing or addictive. Um, and interestingly, has a really quite severe withdrawal. How many pills, what kind of doses are people taking that you're seeing coming into the service? It's not abnormal for somebody to be taking 30, 40 a day. If you take a drug every day, you build tolerance to that drug. Like a lot of medicines, the longer you take something, the less effective it tends to become. You tend to see more of the negative side effects and less of the positive effects of the drugs over, over long periods of time. And, and, and a lot of people using drugs, they're always chasing that feeling that they'll never get back. Why is there such a high use of Valium in Scotland? Oh, you know, we are famous for, you know, caring about our money in Scotland. So, uh, you know, £10 rock of crack, smoke it, you'll be stimulated for 10, 15 minutes, you know, you'll, it'll feel good. For the same price, I could have 100 milligrams of diazepam, where you'll be able to escape from your reality for the next couple of days. Diazepam's always been around, and it's always been consistent. Scotland's little helper. Yeah, Scotland's little helper, yeah. Do you think the rise of drug-related deaths in Scotland is connected to the sort of extensive use of Valium on the street? I would say on its own, no, it's not. Unfortunately, and, and when people are dying from drug death, overdose in Scotland, it, it's polydrug use. It's Valium plus alcohol. It's Valium plus heroin. It's Valium plus methadone. So when it's used in combination with those drugs, yes, it is dangerous. And it, it, it is, you know, it, it, it is implicated in those deaths from, from our perspective. And normally what's happened to people is they're becoming so relaxed that their body just, their brain just stops telling them to breathe anymore. Gareth put me in touch with Joe Roden, whose son John had died after taking the tablets aged 32. Like Levi and many other users, John had mixed Valium with methadone. Joe took me to the flat where John's body had been found three years ago. This is wee John's house in the first tenement there on the top. Have you been down here since? No. You've not been down since? No, no, no. Do you find yourself kind of craning round when you pass in the car? Or... I, I did a look. Um, if it's a coping mechanism or what, I don't know. A nice place he lived in. Nothing a matter yet. It's just where really he died. And it's only a house. He's not there. I don't want, really want to look at it, but that's it. Because it's the same blinds. Is that what haunted yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Because I broke them. Because when I went in, the police had the, the blinds down, like the way they are now. And I tried to pull them up, and the string came away, and I grabbed them, and I broke them. So. I mean, that's where he died, sitting on his sofa. It's hard to believe. You know. Joe, <laughs> <laughs> Are there a lot of people in the sort of wider community who've lost people to Valium as well? Yeah, yeah, definitely, yes. At least once a, when a month. Um, How many people do you personally know who've lost people to... Personally. ...to Valium overdoses? One. 
five. Five personally? Uh -huh. And that's all in the last few years? Yeah. Last year. In the last year? Yeah. Joe's close friend Caroline lost her brother Sean to an overdose involving Valium four years ago. And then, like, my wee brother was just like a hat in the face for me. And I was, he was a baby. I never expected it for him. You see him, and you see it, he was getting worse and worse. And the last time I seen him, he was like a skeleton with a skin graft. Mm -hmm. And it was like you could see his bones right through his skin. It was horrible. Do you ever really think about maybe why your brother took drugs? I can't understand how he started. I think at first they think they can control their drug intake, but they can't. The drugs take over, don't they? And that's hard. That's hard for us to, to live with. You're angry at people that are making them. You're angry at people that are sending them. You just get angry, and then it's all sadness. You're angry at them for taking them but they took them for a reason, and I think it's to escape from your reality. I mean, it didn't matter what I said to him. It didn't matter what anybody said to him. You know what I mean? Um, and then... you just got to... Um, It's just a downward spiral, isn't it? Rather than an upward struggle, it's a downward spiral, isn't it? Mm. Earlier on, I promised Levi I would pop back to see him. However, when I got to his flat, he seemed pretty out of it. I met with Levi's friend AJ, who had previously been his drug worker. She decided to visit him when she'd heard about the cocktail of drugs that he'd been taking. Or not. Levi, it's AJ! Yeah. It's wrong there, yeah. It's AJ, man. Get a grip of yourself, kid. Is that what you have? Uh -huh. Yeah, you have. Uh -huh. You took two strips, haven't you? No, I have not took any. See what I mean? Since I've seen don't you. lie to me, don't lie to me, Levi, because I'm not. I've had 20. 20 what? 20 grooves. Dodgy ones. And kizzies. Do you know where you should be? Where I am? You can't cope on your own, Levi. The way you are now. Uh, I was in there, uh, really cool for you know what I'm going to say to you, don't you, Levi? Yeah. Exactly. Get the fucker cleaned up now. Get the fucking cleaned up and get your head sorry. Uh -huh. Get your things out of your arse, mate. Uh -huh. Don't do what everybody else is doing around you and do what you want to do. I have never, ever seen your flat like this before. Uh, it would never happen. I've seen you in this state. I... Worse than this. Well, I've never seen your flat like this, please. I, do you know if that lad didn't come to, for me tonight and I didn't see you in the town? Do you know what would happen? No. I'd be looking for you in Dundee. No, that's me, okay. For you. Yeah, that's what I mean. Worried about you. Yeah. But again, no, you cannot kid a kid up. No, I know. Been there and done it myself. No, I mean, I know exactly. someone. I, I know someone in, in who works and they lose us. Who wants it? Um, Please don't uh, smoke that in front of me, that legal eye. Please, uh, I don't take it myself, so. I don't know that. Too. Thank you. Whoa, leave my man. Away, son. Away. Put your head together, Kira. Give your head a shake. Leave my man. Put yourself together, Kira. I have, right. He's had a briefly. He had two when I was working with him. And obviously, he's had a loved one since I haven't been working with him, you know? <laughs> so that's been the last four years, you know? So that is quite a thing on his head. 
playing and he hasn't breathed over it. He hasn't. I don't like seeing you like this, you know. I like to just to beat you up the arse and get you into gear. <laughs> to one of them, sorry. <laughs> sorry for swearing. Let me you, <laughs> you know, but that's what I feel like doing. I do, but I can't. So I know that you're going to be all right. No, obviously I'm going to be all right. No, just to, to know uh, that I know that you're going to be all right. Then I'm just going to go find the man taking them all the night. It's enough for tomorrow. Um, how many you brought today? No, there was eight. He had something in the pocket. In, 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 the, in the air thing. In his bag. Wait, in the bag? Probably 50. It's in two bars. Last of the... So you've took 30 today? Yeah. No, 20, 20, 20. You took 20 today, don't you? Yeah. Are you going to be all right? Yeah. I'll see. No. I'll do it with you, boy. 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 So no, I need mate. to know, Liam. What are you up to now? <laughs> is, uh, is, is this picking all these legal high up? I can't believe you. You look at his head. Hang them up now. Close me beats. Hang them up. If you hang them up, it's against the law. It doesn't make you to be in the dance law. You're against law? Oh, no, it's in the dance law. I need. Baby, baby. Well, just walk along, do another Is he going to be right to leave? You're happy to leave him? Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to leave him because he's. Sound is a He sound is a pound. He knows, you know, he's talking to me. You know, he's That's opened his eyes you. like he is now. You know, with a smile on the face. Yeah. You know, I know he's happy. Yeah, yeah. I'm going anyway, big boy. Yeah, I love boy. you and leave you, you know. I do. I'm leaving yeah. my spirit in this room to look after you. Right? Where's the bin shoot? She has the door. Right outside your door? Yeah. It wants to be, you know. Yeah. I'm not going to run no the these stairs. I think I'm going to these stairs for bins. Yeah. For that, for that. <laughs> Coming to Dundee, I had half expected to find people high on Valium, having a good time. But the reality was very different. Valium is a lonely drug, offering only a temporary escape from life's problems. You need to sort out deprivation. Unfortunately in Scotland, we have some real poverty-stricken communities. So I can sit with somebody and we can really engage with somebody, but unfortunately they've got to go home. I went to meet Levi the next day to see how he was doing. How many Valium tablets did you take yesterday? Probably be like, probably be a hundred eventually. So that is that a normal amount for you to take in a day? Yeah. Look, I was on two hundred and thirty tablets a day, and I was still walking around like it was no tomorrow. Walking around like it was no tomorrow. Like, like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> It would it turned up a horse out, man. Yeah. But the Levi just wandered as long as it's no matter. No problem. <laughs> Do you worry about your health? No. Why? Why bother about health? That's all you got. We all die at some point. I know, but it's all you got to till that happens. When that happens, that happens. I'm not saying I wanna die early by any chance. I want a nice long life, but please believe I've had some funny old life, me. Yeah, if I went tomorrow, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, do you want to come off Valium? You want to stop taking Valium? Yeah. Do you consider yourself to be addicted then? Yeah. Everyone has choices um, in their life to do right or wrong. It's up to them to make that choice. Time to start them for a job and stuff. 
um, start start um, becoming back into society and um, working hard like I used to. So I used to voluntary work and everything, and I'm just going through a blip at the minute. What would you say to people about value as someone who's been had a lot of close personal experience with it? She can be the loveliest woman in the world, and she can be the most evilest cow in the world. <laughs> what value can you? Yeah. So what... She can be amazing, and she can be. She can be the god, and she can be the devil. I'll get mine, yeah. Yeah. I'm good enough to come in there. Uh, well, it's very helpful, thank you.